Okay. So uh, thank you, George, for this uh, opportunity for me to present uh, what is happening today between Lebanon and Israel uh, related to the maritime border uh, negotiations. It is important for Lebanon uh, to present uh, what is uh, what they are, uh, their position on these negotiations. And it is important to understand what is at stake between Lebanon and Israel. So uh, thank you for all the viewers to stay with us so that I can explain what's the Lebanese position and what is Lebanon demanding from the uh, U.S. and from the uh, Israeli side. Uh, go ahead, continue. Okay. So uh, as uh, everybody remembers or those who are following the, uh, uh, the news uh, between what's happening in the East Mediterranean and between Lebanon and Israel, uh, on the 1st of October 2020, the uh, Speaker of the Lebanese Parliament went live on TV to announce that the Lebanon-Israel negotiations on the maritime border will start uh, soon. And he read like six points that were the uh, framework for the negotiations, kind of the roadmap to what would be uh, the uh, negotiations or how the negotiations will take place. So the first point that he has raised is like, there will continue to be a land, a land uh, border negotiations between Lebanon and Israeli under the UNIFIL flag. Uh, the second point was on the maritime border, where he said there will be continuous meetings in Nakura, which is on the borders between Lebanon and Israel, uh, with the U.S. and UNSCO representatives. So it's not the UNIFIL, it's the UNSCO who is going to be representative in these meetings uh, between, uh, 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 for the uh, maritime negotiations. Uh, then the third point that he mentioned was that the U.S. was requested by Lebanon and Israel to be the mediator in these negotiations. Uh, and he uh, announced that the maritime boundary agreement will be sent to the U.N. And when an agreement on land and maritime borders are reached, uh, the blue line agreed uh, and signed by Lebanon, Israel, and UNIFIL will be, uh, uh, will be uh, kept as official, as the, the blue line, which is like uh, we mean on the land borders. And for the maritime borders, the parties will sign and implement the outcome agreed upon. And the last point that he mentioned was that the U.S. will ensure a positive and constructive environment for fast results. So these were the six points that the Speaker of the Parliament announced on the 1st of October. So uh, then we see that by, uh, by the 14th of October, the negotiations uh, started. So it was the first meeting uh, between uh, Lebanon and Israel under the umbrella of the UN in Nakura, as we said, and with the presence of the, the US mediator. So uh, this was a very short meet uh, and don't greet because as you know, these are indirect negotiations between Lebanon and Israel because Lebanon and Israel at, are at a state of war and, um, uh, and Lebanon does not recognize the, uh, the, the existence of Israel. So these were like the ground, ru uh, ground rules and a short meeting. It didn't last more than one hour. Uh, and later on, between the 28th of October and 11 uh, November, we had three technical rounds where the Lebanese presented their position and the Israelis presented their position on the maritime borders. So, and we'll go to these on, in details. On the 2nd of December, instead of having the fourth technical meeting, we ended up with the U.S. mediator visiting the Lebanese negotiating team and the Lebanese authorities uh, to discuss the uh, progress of these negotiations. And after that, nothing has happened. So since the 2nd of December, there is nothing happening between Lebanon and Israel regarding the uh, maritime uh, border negotiations. So what happened during these three uh, meetings, technical meetings? So there was a kind of a surprise effect from the Lebanese uh, side because for the U.S. and Israel, they were under the impression that the negotiations will be around the 860 square kilometers that you can see here on the map, which is between the line one, which is the Israeli claim to the borders, and line 23, which is the claim by Lebanon uh, uh, in, uh, that was the, uh, the claim in 2011. So for the Israelis and the Americans, the expectation was that we will enter into these negotiations to negotiate over line one and line 23, which is the 800 square uh, kilometers of uh, dispute. And even the Israeli energy minister stated before the launch of the first meeting saying that Israel is ready to give up like 52% of that disputed area 
uh, and we want uh, we, we are entering in that spirit. But however, in Lebanon, a surprise, the Lebanese negotiating team surprised everyone by uh, proposing a different map. And this map had a uh, line 29, which according to the Lebanese negotiating team, this is the right border according to UNCLOS, and we'll go there. So the, the Lebanese the negotiating team surprised everyone asking for additional 1,430 square kilometers above the 860 square kilometers. So as I read to you the framework the, at the beginning, the framework does not, does not mention what is the disputed zone. It does not say that uh, the negotiations should be over the 860 square kilometers. It doesn't mention that. So therefore, Lebanon is considering that they haven't broken any rule or any agreement between uh, between uh, them and the, the Americans and the Israelis. Uh, it was that a loophole that Lebanon uh, uh, used? Uh, we don't know. Uh, uh, definitely, it is a loophole that Lebanon took advantage of. And was it a mistake from the U.S. and Israel? So actually, uh, we don't know if it was a mistake that they have uh, they haven't paid attention to that point, or they were under the, the understanding that uh, the negotiations would be over the 860 square kilometers. So this was the main problem that faced uh, the, uh, the delegations uh, during the first three meetings. And that this is why on the 2nd of December, the U.S. mediator was talking bilaterally to the Lebanese negotiators because they wanted to see if there is a possibility uh, to change this dynamics and go back to the 860 square kilometers instead of negotiating uh, over like line uh, 29. So for Lebanon, to understand the Lebanese, uh, if you want, the Lebanese uh, point of view, okay? And what I'll be stating today is the Lebanese point of view vis-a-vis -vis these matters. So for Lebanon, for the Lebanese negotiating team, they entered into these negotiations uh, using the UNCLOS as a basis to the claim of line 29 that you can see here uh, on the map again. Uh, they used what they understand and UNCLOS being the starting point of any uh, delimitation, uh, maritime delimitation, so which is the uh, terminus between uh, the land and the sea border. And we'll go back, at, we'll go in the following uh, uh, slides uh, to that point. And using the equidistant relevant circumstances approach, at the end, be, uh, wanting that this solution, whatever solution is, should be an equitable solution. So Lebanon is basically basing all its claims on the understanding uh, of UNCLOS and the methodologies used by UNCLOS. So uh, for Lebanon, uh, they see a weakness in line one, the, the Israeli claim, and even in line 23, which is the Lebanese claim in, uh, in 2011. So the negotiating team is saying, and this is what they were discussing in the, in the um, uh, negotiations, uh, in the three, three rounds, they were saying that line one, which is the Israeli claim, doesn't start at the right position, which is uh, Ras al Naura, and we'll come back to that. So they are starting seven meters from the shore into the sea. And on the, while the Lebanon Israel uh, borders uh, and the, uh, the ending point between the land and the, the start of the sea is very clear. It's a rock, it's not changeable, it's not a river, so that we would decide to start from uh, inside the sea instead of starting from where it should start. So for them, they see the first weakness is that this point, this line starts seven meters from the shore. Then it goes equidistant for 18 nautical miles and suddenly it shifts to point one. And what is this point one actually? So this point one is a point that was indicated in an agreement between Lebanon and Cyprus in the EEZ agreement between Lebanon and Cyprus in 2007. But according to Lebanon, this agreement has never been ratified by the Lebanese government and therefore does, does, doesn't exist. This agreement is not enforced, it doesn't exist, it's not implementable, and anything that comes from uh, that agreement is, not, is non-existent and doesn't have any legal basis. A plus to that, uh, the uh, Lebanon, uh, um, uh, Lebanon uh, position is that point one, if it was the tri point between Lebanon, Israel, and uh, Cyprus, it should have been negotiated between the three countries, and it cannot be decided alone or bilaterally. 
And it is, this, this is a provision that existed in the, in the agreement between Cyprus and Lebanon that was not ratified. And it was a provision that exists in the agreement between, signed between Cyprus and Israel. So therefore, that's why Lebanon believes that line one does not have any uh, ba legal basis for, for, uh, to start with for the negotiations. On plus, on top of that, the Lebanese negotiating team uh, believes that line 23 that is claimed by Lebanon pre-October 2020 ha is, has faults as well and big weaknesses. One of them, again, it's the starting point. It starts 28 meters from the shore into the sea, okay? And 12 nautical miles, it, use, it uses equidistant, the equidistant line for 12, not, 12 nautical miles, and suddenly, randomly, it shifts to point 23 and, and with, without any explanation. So therefore, for the Lebanese negotiating team, line one and line 23, both of them are weak and they cannot be the starting point for the negotiations. On top of that, there is another point that Lebanon or another line that Lebanon is contesting, which is the Hof line. So what is the Hof line? So when, uh, as you see in this uh, point, it's a point between a line one claimed by the Israelis and line 23 claimed by Lebanon pre-October 2020. So why is it called the Hof Line? Because the, at that time, in 2011 and 12, the American ambassador, Frederick Hof, was the mediator trying to solve this maritime border issue between Lebanon and Israel. And at that time, he reached an agreement to divide the uh, disputed zone of that time uh, between Lebanon and Israel, 55% giving to Lebanon and 45% giving uh, to uh, uh, Israel. So, uh, so 490 square kilometers to Lebanon and 370 square kilometers to, uh, uh, to the Israelis. Uh, uh, this agreement was never approved by the Lebanese uh, government. Therefore, uh, it's not standing. Uh, uh, so it, it, it is there, but it has never been ratified. And today we are discussing again the Hof line. We'll come back to that. But for the Lebanese negotiating team, first, again, the weakness of the Hof line is that it starts three miles away from the land sea uh, starting point, so which is a problem. On top of that, they see that the Hof line is taking uh, is taking into consideration the Techelit rock as a base point on the baseline of Israel, which is distorting the whole uh, uh, the whole um, um, uh, uh, delimitation. And therefore, for Lebanon, the Hof line is not the equitable, uh, will not end up with an equitable uh, solution. On top of that, for Lebanon, they consider, when you look at the different points, that the Hof line is, could, be, could be considered as the maximalist claim of Israel, the, uh, the most that Israel can claim, uh, uh, can claim that has some sort of a basis. Okay, but because at least the Hof line is using the equi equitable, this, uh, equitable uh, is using the equidistance, but the two flows that Lebanon sees is that it doesn't start from the starting, the correct starting point, and second, it is using uh, Techelet as a base as a base point on the baseline, which is distorting and it's giving a disproportionate uh, effect, and that is not a, an equitable solution. So. Uh, uh, so uh, Lebanon is saying, based on unclosed methodology, using the equidistance with relevant circumstances, and using the starting point as Ras al Nakura, and giving zero effect to Techelet, which is the rock that is distorting the whole uh, maritime delimitation, line 29 is the correct line, is the strongest line that Lebanon should be claiming when they're doing the negotiations. So what does that mean? For Lebanon, what they want today to establish is that we cannot, this, uh, we cannot this, uh, negotiate over the 860 square kilometers, so between the, the Israeli claim and the Lebanese old claim. What they should be discussing is the uh, Hof line, which has strong bases, with, but with flows, and the Lebanese line, which has, uh, as, as, we, as I explained it in the previous uh, uh, slide. So for them, this is the, uh, the two strongest positions or points based on unclosed that the negotiation should happen uh, uh, on them. So 
And then, therefore, it would be the Israeli maximalist claim, the, the out, uh, utmost claim for Israel, and between the Lebanon, utmost claim. And this is where the negotiation should be happening uh, and not uh, on the 800 square, square kilometers. And this is what Lebanon is trying today to, uh, to, um, uh, to kind of uh, impose or to, or to at least ask the U.S. mediator to consider as the right way of moving forward. Okay, so now let's discuss quickly the, uh, the Tehelet uh, effect. Uh, as I said, for Lebanon, they consider that the Hof line uh, is giving full effect to this Tehelet rock, which is like one kilometer away from the uh, shores of Israel, and they're using it as a base point on the baseline. And therefore, by, by using it as a base point on the baseline, it's causing it a disproportionate effect. It's, it, uh, uh, therefore, Lebanon is considering that Tehelet uh, shouldn't be any, given any uh, effect. So this is one of the main, uh, 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 if you want, disagreements today. Uh, and we've seen like during the negotiations, the, uh, the Minister of Energy, the Israeli Minister of Energy, took the negotiating team and a media crew to Tehelet, to the rock, to, uh, to, to sit and have uh, tea or coffee, to sip uh, coffee or tea, to make a point uh, to the Lebanese and to the US that this is a rock that should be considered and you cannot ignore it while you are, while you are delimitating your, uh, uh, the, the, the maritime borders. The second point, the uh, Ras al Naura effect. So for Lebanon, is this saying that the, uh, the starting point for the uh, for the for the line, if you want, or for the delimitation, should be Ras al Naura because Ras al Naura, as you see in this picture, this it's very clear. It's a, it's the end of the rock. It's the tip of the rock, and this is where it should start because this is the uh, official international border that was drawn in 1923 between uh, Lebanon and Palestine at that time, and when the British and the French were controlling both. Uh, countries. So this is the recognized border between Lebanon and Israel, and therefore Israel should respect that point as the starting point for any negotiation or any delimitation, and there should not be choosing a point in the sea or uh, or uh, or whatever uh, uh, or a different point from of, of that to start the delimitation. Uh, uh, Israel is refusing to recognize this as the starting point. Uh, and this, uh, especially that point B1 that you see on the map as well is one of the uh, land uh, uh, um, uh, points that are th that the Israelis are disagreeing with Lebanon on its uh, position because for for security reasons basically B1 gives the advantage for Lebanon overseeing the borders with Israel while Israel wants to push it like a bit of uh, uh, like 20 or 25 meters to the north so that Israel has the upper hand overseeing the Lebanese uh, borders. That's why for the Israelis, it's very important that this Ras al Naura is not recognized as the official uh, border between Lebanon and Israel and the official starting point for the uh, delimitation. So this, uh, these are like the two main problems today that uh, Lebanon and Israel are disagreeing on. The Tehelet effect and the Ras al Naura uh, effect. So the result of all of this is that Lebanon is saying that if we consider effect and if, if we're giving an effect to Tehelet, full effect, Lebanon is losing 1,800 square kilometers of sea of potential resources. And that's why it believes that this is not an equitable solution and no international court would give the Israelis the right to uh, uh, have a full effect on Tehelet, which will make Lebanon lose that, that much of kilometers. Therefore, uh, therefore, Lebanon is claiming that they, they should be, uh, it would be hard to sell it to the people to say that I, I'm making that kind of a concession and uh, losing 1,800 square kilometers by recognizing the effect of the Khalid as a full uh, effect. And definitely Lebanon is refusing to change the uh, starting point as uh, I mentioned uh, earlier. So, the last point that I want to raise here, that what is at stake? So basically, once Lebanon is deciding to choose the equidistant with relevant circumstances approach, zero effect to Tehelet, starting point Ras al Naura, 
automatically the line, the green line that you see here, is crossing half of the Karish field. And as, uh, as you know, the Israel, this is an Israeli field uh, invested by Energian, the Greek uh, company uh, registered in the UK. And Karish is a proven reserve field, and it is about to start development and production by end of 2021. So therefore, it is a high stake. There is a high stake for the Israelis to come back to the table of negotiations to uh, save Karish. But at the same time, for now, the Israelis are saying, maybe if we don't come back to the table of negotiations, we'll keep it uh, this way until we start, until energy starts developing the Karish field, and then Lebanon will not be able to stop it, uh, to stop the uh, production from flowing. So what Lebanon is considering, actually, is uh, they want to push for Karish to be a disputed field uh, so that Lebanon has the potential of freezing uh, potential activities uh, until the dispute is resolved. So for now, in, uh, if you want, like in, in a nutshell, in summary, uh, the negotiations are, uh, uh, are, uh, st has, have stopped. Um, there are differences in views between the Lebanese and the Israelis on where the starting, uh, uh, the starting uh, point for negotiations uh, should be over 860 square kilometers or over the new, uh, uh, over, over the new uh, lines that, uh, the, the, that were proposed uh, by the Lebanese. The U.S. mediator currently is, uh, we don't know when they would, or the U.S., we don't know when the U.S. will relaunch, maybe uh, uh, will relaunch the negotiations. Uh, this was a Trump initiative. Uh, and now with the new Biden administration, we don't know how much of a priority is to solve the maritime uh, borders. But I guess, like, it, uh, more importantly, let's see how Lebanon and Israel will act uh, to bring back everybody uh, to the table of negotiations to solve this issue. So in a nutshell, this was uh, the, uh, the Lebanon-Israel uh, maritime negotiations. Uh, developments uh, since October 2020. Thank you for your patience and thank you for uh, listening. And if you have any questions uh, regarding what I uh, presented here, uh, you have my email and you can uh, follow me on Twitter and send me messages on Twitter and I will be uh, very happy to, uh, to uh, answer any questions you have. And thank you.